Now I'm going to create a new adjustment layer and this is going to be a hue saturation adjustment and I'm going to desaturate it by about 50 percent and you can see that adjustment is applied to the entire image and I'm going to choose a black paint brush and I'm going to paint out or mask out the cat because I really don't want this desaturation applied to the cat at all. Okay. Now if I look at my mask here, I can see that I've missed a spot. And I'm going to hold down the Alt key so I can see it larger. Now, it's in an area of the cat's body where there's really not any color anyway, so it's probably not a big deal. However, I want to show you that in this enlarged view, you can actually paint on the mask itself. So to fix this, I can just paint in the mask here. And now we'll Alt-click back on it. And the mask is fixed, and the entire cat is masked out. Now you may have noticed that I've masked out the cat on both the hue saturation adjustment layer and the soft light layer, in essence creating two masks that are basically the same. Now in this example, the mask took only a few seconds to create, so it's not a big deal. However, if you spend a lot of time creating a complex mask and you find that you need the, uh, to mask out the same areas on a different layer, you can copy the mask and save yourself a lot of time. So let me go ahead and show you how this works with Photoshop CS2, keeping in mind that it works differently with prior versions. However, there is a simple uh, selection conversion technique that I'll show you a little bit later that works no matter which version you're using. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and create a new layer, and I'm just going to fill this layer with black. Okay. Now, I can do one of two things. I can either move the mask or copy the mask. And to move it, I just simply click on the layer mask uh, thumbnail and click and drag and then move it to the layer that I want to apply the mask to. And you can see I've moved the mask. Now I'm going to go ahead and undo that. If I want to copy the mask, I simply hold down the Alt or Option key as I'm clicking and dragging and now the mask has been copied. So this is definitely a great way to save you some time, especially when you're working with complex masks. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer since we don't need it. And the next thing I'm going to do is create a new adjustment layer. This time I'm going to create a levels adjustment. Okay. And I'm going to pull this level slider here all the way to just at the beginning of the tonal range there, right where the tonal data starts. Click OK. And for right now, what I really want to do is just apply this levels adjustment to the front of the, the cat's face and, and kind of the front of the body here, the paw and the leg. So I'm going to fill this mask with black. And I'm just going to come in with a white paint brush and just paint it in. Okay. This is a little subtle highlight there on the front of the body. Just like that. Now something else I'd like to point out here is that just as an adjustment layer will apply itself to all of the visible layers underneath it, an adjustment like levels, which is calculating a histogram, will take into account all of the visible layers underneath it, including any adjustment layers. So if I take a look at the histogram, we can see what it looks like. I've got the right slider all the way up to just where the tonal data begins, and I've also got some gaps in here that you can see, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. Now let's say that uh, I want to hide or remove this curves adjustment. So I'm just going to hide it. And now let's look at the histogram again. And you can see those gaps are gone. But my total uh, data now begins past the slider. So I would need to adjust that. It's not a huge difference, but there is a difference. So I would need to adjust that to account for that missing curves adjustment. So just something to keep in mind if you're doing a lot of uh, uh, adjustment layers and you decide to remove some that you may need to go back and look at some of your histograms uh, if you have any, say, levels adjustments. Now the last thing I'd like to do here is get rid of some of this color in the background, this red, and there's some blue over here. That's just a little bit distracting. So what I'm going to do is create a new hue saturation adjustment layer. And this is a great way to get rid of unwanted colors or color casts, and I use it all the time. I'm going to choose reds here from this edit drop down uh, list and it really doesn't matter what color you choose because uh, once you click on the color you're wanting to change it will automatically select the correct one so but obviously this is red so I'm gonna choose it I'm just gonna use this eyedropper tool 
to click on the color that I'm wanting to uh, get rid of and you can see it selects that color range right there and I'm just going to pull the saturation all the way back to zero or actually negative 100 percent click OK and I'm going to go ahead and edit this again and this time I'm going to choose blues actually blues and you can see there's some real subtle blues in here and I'm just going to click on it there okay blues are selected and again just drag the opacity down to negative 100 percent and click OK now the only problem is that there are some reds in, in the cat's fur here so what I'm going to do is just choose a black paintbrush and just paint out those reds or actually I should say paint back in the reds okay just like that well I think the image is just about where I want it and you can see that I've created a much more dramatic look in just a few minutes through the use of layer masks and adjustment layers I would encourage you to experiment with adjustment layers so that you can become proficient with this powerful tool in the next lesson I'll be adding to your layer blending skills with some more advanced layer mask painting techniques